Hey everyone, welcome to Easy Nursing, the channel that's dedicated to bringing you NCLEX reviews, general nursing tips, and practice question videos. Today we're going to be talking about burns, so we're going to be doing some practice questions about burn patients and burns themselves. So let's get started. Which patient is at the highest risk for inhalation injury? Well, let's take a look here. We have a patient with superficial burns, so that's burns just to the outermost layer of the skin, to his back at the beach. All right, to me this sounds like a sunburn. Next one, a patient with partial thickness burns, so this is a little bit more intense, to his right leg from riding a motorcycle. Uh, this is insinuating it's just to his leg, maybe burn his leg on the exhaust or something. Patient with partial thickness burns from opening a hot doorknob to escape a burning building. So this here, we see it's only partial thickness, but it's telling us that he was trying to open a door to a burning building. So that's a key sign there. And a patient with burns to his arms from spilling boiling water while cooking. Well, this here is boiling water caused the burn, so this is just on the, the outside of the skin where it hit. So if you see here, it says, uh, what, what's inhalation injury? It shows here that inhalation injury is damage to the lungs and the airway, uh, which can be due to hot air, steam, smoke, um, aspiration, and irritant gases. So keeping that in mind, uh, the pro question that looks most like the correct answer would be the inside the burning building. It shows that he burnt his hands trying to escape the burning building when you're in an enclosed space the gases and the smokes can accumulate and he could aspirate them so for this one we'll pick C let's look at the next question so we have a patient with severe burns to his right arm and he comes to the ER so that means this is emergent uh, what would be the correct route for administration of analgesics so we're talking about the emergent phase of burns. How do we give analgesics? So uh, we have several different modes here. It looks like we have an IM shot to the deltoid. We have subcutaneous to the fat of the arm, intravenous, and topically. And so this just brings up, you have to know the correct route of drug administration. And for this patient, it went through, uh, this is emergent, and so they want to have uh, quick uh, pain relief and so the correct answer should be intravenously. Uh, with a burn patient, um, especially being in the arm, who knows, it doesn't tell you how far up the arm has been burned. It may be burnt up to the deltoid, it may be burnt up to the right uh, to the upper arm. Uh, either way you'd want to avoid subcutaneous on IM anyways because uh, it's going to take a while. Intravenous is going to have almost an instantaneous pain relief. And topically, you're probably not going to apply very much topically because that arm's going to be burned, and it says it's a severe burn here, and it may be irritating to the tissues, and you don't want to put them at risk for infection. So for this question, the answer is intravenous pain control for severe burns. Let's look at the last one. So you're caring for a patient with deep partial thickness burns to 35% of the body. So when we're talking about 30% or greater, this is a severe burn, and severe burns... Uh, have systemic effects. So uh, which of the following are expected initial findings? So this is expected findings for severe burn. Um, and if you see here, there's some systemic effects that you can have. It says here greater than 30% of burns. So it looks like we're going to have problems with uh, cardiovascular problems, respiratory, metabolic, uh, immunological at risk for immune, uh, infections. Um, some vasoconstriction, spasms, increased capillary permeability. Let's keep that in mind. Let's take a look. All right, so severe burns. Would we expect hypokalemia? This is going to be wrong right off the bat because the burn is going to cause the cells to rupture. And potassium is very high in numbers in cells. So when it ruptures, it was leaking potassium into the bloodstream these patients you'll expect to see hyperkalemia. All right, severe burn hypotension. Now this we do expect, so I'll go ahead and highlight it. You ha expect this because all the fluid is shifting, either leaking out of the body 
at the site of the burn or it is being leaked into the, the body tissues around the burn. So instead of it being in the blood vessels like it should, it leaks into the cells and around the cells. And that's why burn patients you'll see very severe edema, not just at the side of the burn, but across their whole body. So will we expect decreased hematocrit? Well, I told you all the water is gonna be leaking out of the bloodstream. The blood stays inside, so since it's less co uh, concentrated, because there's less water in there, uh, it's gonna increase the hematocrit initially. So it is not gonna be like this. So initially, you will have an increased hematocrit because of the decreased concentration in your leaking fluids. Uh, and afterwards, uh, remember here, we're talking about initial. So later on, you'll see the hematocrit drop. All right, we have here hypernatremia. With hypernatremia, this is gonna um, also be wrong. Reason being, uh, when I told you that water leaks, water and salt go together. So all you have water and salt leaking into the body tissues causing that edema. Tachycardia, well that goes hand in hand with hypotension. So you're not having enough fluid volume in your blood vessels, your heart's gonna try to compensate by increasing the heart rate. So we have essentially B and E here. And so that's the answers for this question. All right, that's my NCLEX video for burns. And if you, uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to Easy Nursing. And I'll be making more videos like this for you. All right, thank you all.